Hey, Monaga Distance Learners, it's Mr. Schroeder with another Math Enrichment lesson. Um, make sure you watch this video to the very end because I do have a quick quiz for you to turn in via email to myself. Um, today we're going to be taking a step back and looking at fractions again. I know that Unit 4 in your math journal is all about multiplication, but I'm going to add on to some of the things you know about fractions to help you be able to add fractions. And that's the goal of today is to be able to add fractions. And we've compared fractions, um, we found equivalent fractions, so we use a lot of those same skills in order to add fractions. And I'll show you what I mean by that, okay? An easier one might look like this. One-third plus one-third. Some of these fractions that you add, maybe you've done it before, you've heard other teachers say, like a half plus a half makes a whole. Well, obviously half a drink plus another half a drink makes a full drink. But when the fractions get more complex or confusing with different denominators, it's kind of hard to know what to do. Here's an easier example of a fourth grade math fraction addition problem. I want to show you some of the rules that you have to follow on an easier problem first. One third plus one third. If I put two thirds together, it's two-thirds. Seems pretty easy. The reason I got that one correct is because, this is really important, I only add the numerator. One plus one is two. The biggest mistake fourth graders make is they take the numerator, they add it just like they're supposed to. Then they take the denominator and add it. Three plus three is six. But that's not what you should do when you add fractions. You need to keep a denominator the same the entire time. So one third plus one third, add the numerator two, and the denominator stays the same at three two thirds. We call this a common denominator. They always have to have the same denominator when you add. I'll write that down just so you can see what that looks like. Common denominator. Every single time you need to find a common denominator before you add. It's that simple. That's really the only hard part about adding fractions. Um, moving on from that, I'll show you a little bit uh, more challenging of a problem. For example, if I had one third, same start, but in this case I had plus um, three sixth. Right away my brain jumps to, I do not have a common denominator. I need the denominators on both of these fractions to be the same before I add them. Every single time. Don't rush yourself and just jump to adding the numerator way, right away, saying 1 plus 3 is 4 and then uh, it's got to be a 6. Well, that's not correct. A lot of kids do that. You have to tell yourself, common denominator. Let me go back and change one of the fractions to help them become common. We've talked about a lot how to make equivalent fractions for each fraction. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Well, is there a way, or first thing I want to say is, is there a number that both 3 and 6 fit into? 3 and 6 are both factors of what number? They both factors fit, so they both fit into what number? And a lot of you might see right away that 3 fits into 6. I don't need to change this side. I do need to change this side to make that 3 a common denominator of 6. So how does 3 become 6? Whatever you do to the bottom, 3 times 2 is 6. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 2, since there's times 2 on the bottom, is 2. 2 6 and 1 3rd are the same thing. They are equivalent fractions. I no longer need my old fraction anymore. When I add those together, I now add the numerators, just like Mr. Shorter said earlier. 2 plus 3 is 5. And the denominator stays the same. It never changes. It's a common denominator. So the total answer here, 1 3rd plus 3 6 is 5 6, because 1 3rd is also equal to 2 6. Common denominators. You need to find them. Okay. And one mistake kids like to make is this. Before I cross that one off, if you accidentally do this, it happens sometimes, but you got to be able to catch yourself. I change one third into two sixths, and a lot of kids do this on accident. One plus two is three, plus three more is six. And the denominator I now made was six. That is 
incorrect. You have to get rid of your old fraction when you make your new fraction or equivalent fraction because you're replacing it with the new common denominator fraction. Okay? So don't add all the numerators without crossing off your old fraction first. Now, the most advanced type of fourth grade problem, for right now anyways, is something that looks a little bit more like this. Um, we'll go to, let's use something totally different. One fifth plus, um, let's do eighths, three eighths. Now, if I'm looking for common denominators, one easy thing I like to do right away is think, does five fit into eight? Is five a factor of eight? If so, then I can change them both into eights, or at least change this one into an eight. But five doesn't fit into eight. So I have to find something that both of these denominators can fit into. Well, if I don't really know what it would be, an easy thing to do is take the denominator from one side and multiply it by the denominator on the other side. 5 times 8, 40. My new common denominator is going to be 40. Whatever I do to the bottom on this side, I do to the top. 1 times 8 is 8. These two are equivalent fractions. Now, if it's 40 on this side, i got to find my common denominators to add, so the 8 is also going to become 40 by multiplying it by 5. It's an easy trick to find common denominators. Um, it's just taking those two denominators and multiplying them together. Then you know the denominator that they will be able to share. Now, whatever I do to the bottom on this side, I have to do to the top. 3 times 5 on the bottom, or 5 on the bottom, so 5 on the top is 15. These are now equal. I've had to change both fractions to an equivalent fraction, but now that I have the denominator of 40, I can get rid of both of my old fractions. Now the answer is as simple as keeping the denominator the same. This is all equal to, and then I've got to add the numerators. So 15 plus 8. Well, 15 plus 5 would be 20, plus 3 more would be 23, because 15 plus 8 is 23. Now my answer would be 23. 40ths. Finding common, common denominators can be quite difficult when you have to change both of them, but that's about as hard as it's going to get for right now. Now, on your own at home, I'm going to give you a few different problems that I want you to email back to me so I can give you so I can grade them and count it as a quiz. I know I don't do a lot of quizzes in this class, but this is something that will go into the grade book. So, here's question one. I want you to try, um, they'll get progressively harder, two-fifths plus one-fifth, something that already has a common denominator, number two. I want you to try something that does, one is can be changed, for example, I would do two-sixth plus five-twelfths. Notice how they're not common. You're going to have to change one side to become a common denominator to match the other side by finding equivalent fractions. Then three, finally, this is the hardest one. I want to see if you can do one where you have to change both sides. Example, one eighth, and I'm going to add um, two thirds. Well, I gotta figure out three doesn't fit into eight, so I can't just change this into an eight. I have to find I have to change both sides, something that both of eight and three can fit into. They're factors of what multiple and what common denominator can I use. That's where I'm gonna leave you guys. I would love you to email me the answer to these three problems. If you need more help, you can definitely email me too. I'm always open um, before school for a little bit. Um, sometimes even on my break or after school, I'll try to get to you that same day. Um, here's my email. Make sure you get it into me. It's H S C H R O E D E R H Schroeder, and then at the same as every other teacher that you email is Monaga M E N A H G A dot K twelve dot M N dot U S. Do your best to answer me or email me the answers to these three addition problems for fractions. Okay? Thank you guys. Remember common denominators. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.